We're going to read Cinderella from the Brothers Grimm. The wife of a rich man fell sick, and when she felt that her end drew near, she called her only daughter to her bedside and said, Always be a good girl, and I'll look down from heaven and watch over you. Soon afterwards, she shut her eyes and died, and was buried in the garden, and the little child went every day to her grave and cried, and was always good and kind to all about her. And the snow spread a beautiful white covering over the grave, but by the time the sun had melted it away again, her father had married another wife. This new wife had two daughters of her own that she brought home with her. They were fair in face, but foul in heart. And it was now a sorry time for the poor little girl. What does the good-for-nothing thing want in the parlor? said they. Who would want eat bread should first earn it? Away with the kitchen maid. Then they took away her fine clothes and gave her old gray frock to put on and laughed at her and turned her into the kitchen. There she was forced to do hard work, to rise early before daylight, to bring in the water, to make the fire, to cook and to wash. Besides that, the sisters plagued her in all sorts of ways and laughed at her. In the evening, when she was tired, she had no bed to lie down on, but was made to lie by the hearth among the ashes. And then, as she was of course always dusty and dirty, they called her Cinderella. It happened once that the father was going to the fair and asked his wife's daughters what he should bring them. Fine clothes, said the first. Pearls and diamonds, cried the second. Now, child, he said to his own daughter, what will you have? The first sprig, dear father, that rubs against your hat on your way home, said she. Then he brought for the two first fine clothes, pearls and diamonds that they had asked for. And on his way home, he rode through a green corpse, a sprig of hazel brushed against him, and almost pushed off his hat. So he broke it off and brought it away. And when he got home, he gave it to his daughter. Then she took it and went to her mother's grave and planted it there, and cried so much that it was watered with her tears, and there it grew many times a fine tree. Three times every day she went to it and wept, and soon a little bird came and built its nest upon the tree, and talked with her, and watched over her, and brought her whatever she wished for. Now it happened that the king of the land held a feast, which was to last three days. And out of those who came to it, his son was to choose a bride for himself. And Cinderella's two sisters were asked to come. So they called her up and said, Now, comb our hair, brush our shoes, and tie our sashes for us, for we are going to dance at the king's feast. Then she did as she was told, but all was done, she could not help but cry. She thought to herself, she should have liked to go to the dance too, and at least she begged her mother very hard to let her go. You, Cinderella, said she, you who have nothing to wear, no clothes at all, and who cannot even dance, you want to go to the ball? And when she kept on begging to get rid of her, she said, at last, I will throw this basin full of peas into the ash heap, and if you've picked them out in two hours, then you can go to the feast. So she threw the peas into the ashes, but the little maiden ran out in the back door to the garden and cried out, Hither, hither, through the sky, turtle doves and limnets fly, blackbirds thrush and chaff and gay, hither, hither, haste away. One and all, come help me quick, haste ye, haste ye, pick, pick, pick. 
Then first came two white doves flying in at the kitchen window, and next came two turtle doves. And after them, all the little birds under the heaven came chirping and fluttering in and flew down into the ash, and the little doves stooped their heads down and set to pick, 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 pick. And then all the others began to pick, 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 and pick, pick, picked all the good grain and put it into a dish and left the ashes. At the end of one hour, the work was done and all flew out again into the windows. Then she brought the dish to her mother, overjoyed at the thought that she could now go to the wedding. But she said, no, no, you kitchen girl. You have no clothes, you cannot dance, you shall not go. And when Cinderella begged very hard to go, she said, if you can in one hour's time, pick two of those dishes of peas out of the ashes, you shall go. And thus she thought she could at last get rid of her. So she took two dishes of peas into the ashes, but the little maiden went out to the garden and back of the house and she cried out as she did before, Hither, hither, through the sky, turtle dove and nilnit fly, blackbird thrush and chaffinish gay, hither, hither, haste away. One and all come help me quick, haste ye, haste ye, pick, pick, pick. Then first came two white doves in the kitchen window, and next came the turtle doves, and after them all the little birds under heaven came chirping and hopping about, and flew down about the ashes. The little doves put their head down and set to work. Pick, pick, pick. And then the others began to pick, pick, pick. And they all put the good grain into the dishes and left all the ashes. Before half an hour's time was done and all flew out again, Cinderella took the dishes to her mother, rejoicing to think that she could now go to the ball. But her mother said, it's of no use. You cannot go. You have no clothes and cannot dance, and you would only put us to shame. And off she went with her two daughters to go to the feast. Now when all were gone and nobody was left at home, Cinderella went sorrowfully and sat down under the hazel tree and cried out, Shake, shake, hazel tree, gold and silver over me. Then her friend the bird flew out of the tree and brought a gold and silver dress for her and sil slippers of spangled silk, and she put them down. She followed her sisters to the feast, but they didn't know her, and they thought it must be some strange princess because she looked so fine and beautiful. And they never once thought of Cinderella, but took for granted that she was safe at home in the dirt. The king's son soon came up to her and took her by the hand and danced with her and no one else. And he never left her hand. But when anyone else came to ask her to dance, he said, this lady is dancing with me, so go away. Thus, they danced till a late hour of the night, and then she wa wanted to go home, and the king's son said, I shall go and take care of you to your home. For he wanted to see where the beautiful maid lived but she slipped away from him unawares and ran off towards home. And the prince followed her, but she jumped into the pigeon house and shut the door. Then he waited till her father came home and told him that the unknown maiden who had been at the feast had hid herself in the pigeon house. But when they had broken up open the door, they found no one within. And as they came back to the house, Cinderella lay as she always did in her dirty frock by the ashes and her dim little lamp burnt in the chimney, for she had run as quickly as she could through the pigeon house and on to the hazel tree, and had taken off her beautiful clothes and laid them beneath the tree that the bird might carry them away, and had seated herself amid the ashes again in her little gray frock. The next day, when the feast was held again and her father and mother and sisters were gone, Cinderella went to the hazel tree and said, Shake, shake, hazel tree, gold and silver over me. And the bird came and brought a silver, still finer dress than the one she wore before. When she came into it, the ball, everyone wondered at her beauty. But the king's son, who was waiting for her, took her by the hand and danced with her. 
and when anyone asked her to dance, he said as before, This lady is dancing with me. Then night came. She wanted to go home. The king's son followed her as before, that he might see her. What house she went? But she sprang away from him all at once into the garden behind her father's house. In this garden stood a large, fine pear tree full of ripe fruit, and Cinderella, not knowing where to hide herself, jumped up into it without being seen. Then the king's son could not find out where she went, but waited till her father came home and said to him that the unknown lady who danced with him has slipped away, and I think she must have sprung into the pear tree. The father thought to himself, can it be Cinderella? So he ordered an axe to be brought, and they cut down the tree, but found no one upon it. And when they came back to the kitchen, there lay Cinderella in the ashes as usual. For she slipped down on the other side of the tree, and carried a beautiful clothes back to the bird in the hazel tree, and put them on her little gray frock. The third day, when her father, mother, and sisters were gone, she went again to the garden and said, Shake, shake, hazel tree, gold and silver over me. Then her kind friend, the bird, brought a dress of still finer than the former one, and slippers which are all of gold, so that when she came to the feast, no one knew what to say, for wonder at her beauty, and the king's son danced with her alone. When anyone else asked her to dance, he said, This lady is my partner. Now when it came time, she wanted to go home, and the king's son would go with her, and said to himself, I will not lose her this time. But however she managed to slip away from him, though in such a hurry that she dropped her left golden slipper upon the stairs. So the prince took the shoe and went the next day to the father's house and said, I will take for my wife the lady that this golden slipper fits. Then both the sisters were overjoyed to hear, for they had beautiful feet, and they had no doubt that they could wear the golden slipper. The eldest went first into the room where the slipper was and wanted to try it on. And the mother stood by, but her great toe could not go into it. And she, the shoe was altogether much too small for her. Then the mother gave her a knife and said, never mind, cut it off. When you're queen, you'll not care about toes. You will not want to go on foot. So the silly girl cut off her big toe and squeezed the shoe on and went to the king's son, and he took for her his bride, and set her beside him on his horse, and rode away with her. But on their way home, they had to pass the hazel tree that Cinderella had planted, and there sat a little dove on the branch singing, Back again, back again, look to the shoe, the shoe is too small and not made for you. Prince, prince, look again for thy bride, for she's not one, the true one that sits by thy side. Then the prince got down and looked at her foot, and he saw by the blood that streamed from it what a trick was played on him. So he turned his horse around and brought the false bride back to home and said, This is not the right bride. Let her other sister try on the slipper. Then she went to the room and got her foot into the shoe, all but the heel, which was too large. But her mother squeezed it in till the blood came and took her to the king's son. And he set her by his bride and his on his horse and rode away with her. But when they came to the hazel tree, the little dove sat there still and sang, Back again, back again, look to the shoe. The shoe is too small, it's not made for you. Prince, prince, look again for thy bride, for she's not the true one that sits by thy side. Then he looked down and saw the blood stream from the shoe, and that her white stockings were quite red. So he turned the horse and brought it back again also. This is not the true bride, said he to the father. Have you no other daughters? No, said he. There's only little dirty Cinderella here, the child of my first wife, and I'm sure she can't be the bride. However, the prince told him to send her, but the mother said, no, no. She is much too dirty. She will not dare to show herself. However, the prince would have her come, and she first washed her face and hands, and went 
and curtsied to him, and he reached for the golden slipper. Then she took her clumsy shoe off her left foot and put on the golden slipper, and it fitted her as if it had been made just for her. And when she drew near and looked at her face, he knew her and said, This is the right bride. But the mother and both the sisters were frightened and turned pale with anger as he took Cinderella on his horse and rode away with her. And when he came to the hazel tree, the white dove sang, Home, home, look at the shoe. Princess, the shoe was made for you. Prince, prince, take home thy bride, for she is true one that sits by thy side. And when the dove had done its song, it came flying and perched upon her right shoulder, and so went home with her. The end.